What's going on miners? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. So I just took my 3090 out of my PC and this thing is about to be water blocked. I actually already did my other 3090. This is a water block with an active backplate. I have a brand new active backplate, brand new water block, and a 3090 to disassemble. So if you guys are into that, let's do it. All right, so here's my 3090 and we need to remove this three fan shroud and heat sink. So I'm gonna start, I guess, just removing the screws here and then we gotta remove some screws on the face plate here as well. So you guys will watch me do that. I'll just speed through it and then we'll uh, clean up the PCB and then get into opening the active back plate and water block. Obviously I get my handy dandy iFixit kit. This thing is the balls for pretty much everything when it comes to GPU mining. I love it. The thing I love about this thing, you guys can see it is literally magnetic. So you don't drop any screws and it gives you the tray and there's actually right here a magnetic pad for all the screws if you ever wanted to use it. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Underneath the back plates here, just so you guys know, there is a little sticker and they put this EVGA it's like a impossible to peel off sticker without ruining it. So there is a screw literally buried right in the middle of it. You kind of just got to pop through it. Typically you don't need to remove the back plate, but I need to completely wipe down this PCB. I'm actually going to clean this part first before I go too much further. I do have some rubbing alcohol and I have some paper towels. Now what I'm going to do is take off these four screws here holding basically where the memory chip is. And this thing is like spring loaded. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, it literally will shoot up at you. So just be careful doing it when you're taking it apart. There is three right here on the front face plate that we need to remove as well. So these pins, I am probably going to break at least one or two. <laughs> these are so hard to get off and it's just... I, I don't know. I think mining with the card doesn't help because it actually like dry rots the plastic. So yeah, these things tend to crumble. Um, I'm going to try my damnedest to get these things out whole, but I doubt it's going to happen. Look at this, right? The wire on this thing is slammed under the heat sink. So there's no room to push it. You know, I'm going to see if I can separate this a little bit. Might help. Dude, like it's just these clips man like I wish there was a better design because they're once you mine on this thing for any amount of time these 100% just don't they don't want to come out all right and then you have so the reason you can't really pry it out too far there's another clip right here another plug so you gotta get that one out as well. That one's obviously easier once you get the uh, other three removed, you have room to actually get in at it. All right, EK Quantum Vector. You can see the spots where the pads go. It goes here, 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 and then this. And they also have pads all the way down the rails. This one, all the thermal pads are the same. Inside this pack, they give you all the nuts and bolts. They give you some thermal paste that you're not going to use. Um, well, I'm not going to use it. And then they have the, uh, this is a plastic tool. It's for the plugs. It's for this plug right here inside the bag. It's like a cap to block off the extra holes. Now we have, again, the thermal pads it came with. I am going to hold to the actual unit and take my knife and just mark where it is. Now I'm totally removing these gloves for this. All right, so again, this is the front water block. And now that you have everything uh, cut to size where all the thermal pads need to go, obviously you need to peel them and stick them. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And then we will work on putting thermal paste on the actual PCB chip. This is literally the absolute worst part. This is what people trying to like thread a needle feel like. I would imagine anyways. All right, so Thermal Grizzly. This is what I choose to use on the GPU die. 
I'm gonna spread this stuff out. I just like to kind of get it evenly across the entire thing. Um, again, the green spot or gully around the actual memory chip is to catch any fl overflow of thermal paste. So this, I don't know. I just like spreading it out fully. It makes, it makes more sense. It's a real thin layer, just completely covering the uh, actual chip itself. I'm gonna hold the three uh, power ports, the PCIe connections right here towards me, and you're basically going to flip it just like that, all right? You're gonna try to line it up with the holes, the wire you wanna push out of your way first. Just tuck it down in. All right, so these, these holes on the end line up with the very end. All right, so that's like the easiest spot to figure out. And then you kind of just drop it so it hits all the holes evenly. You can see them from this angle. It's kind of hard for you guys to see, but it's easy for me to see. And it just plops right in place. Perfect. I like to push it down, make sure it's good. All right, I'm gonna open the bag. I'm gonna see what we have for screws. So they send you literally a million and one screws. It is absolutely unreal how many screws you get because you use like half of them. Now I need to figure out what screws go where. But yeah, so what I can suggest here is uh, you wanna crisscross, tighten these down. So you wanna tighten, you know, X, kinda like a tire, like every other lug nut, you know what I mean? You wanna do in an X fashion. This now, this is the active back plate. Active back plate is now opened up. We have to, or what I like to do is line it up to figure out which holes you need to fill up with the screws underneath this plate. Because some of them, as you can see, go through into you know the front plate. So it kind of sandwiches the PCB. So more or less, we I'm looking like these two screws right here, these screws, so I don't need to put anything into that right there I need to put a screw into. If there is a receiver on the other side, I gotta look, but um, up here, I don't believe, actually, yeah, I think I do have to screw those in. This one right here, I don't. That one I don't, this one I don't. Then I have one here I gotta put in, one here, and that's it. So, yeah, I knew it was weird, because I had to pull a couple apart the first time I did this, so that's why I kinda wanted to explain that piece for everybody. All right, so, this is what you are more or less left with when it comes to screws and nuts and all that. So these extra pieces are for like the corners here. I mean, obviously I need to put more screws in, but it's got to go through the active back plate. And then they have like, if you're putting the regular back on, you can actually use the nuts and bolts that come with this instead of the old original factory ones. Once you get your water block situated, now we're going to have to pull off this top piece. There we go. All right. Now that's off. This, you can just throw back in the box and whatever. Keep it if you want. You don't really need it though for anything. There's three Allen bolts right here. So we got to unscrew those, get it off the top. Once you remove it, this bracket, all the screws fall out. There was some rubber O-rings in there that actually press against this. And the new water block, or not the new one, but the active back plate has these seals on that already so I like to put this back together somewhat and put it aside real quick note on this back plate you can see right here there is like a metal plate that holds the o-rings and allows them not to dry out you got to remove this this is the hard part this is like what I didn't know um, that I was trying to figure out Obviously, it's not really hard. You can do your research and look it up on EK's website or whatever for their water blocks. So the thermal pads come with the active back plate. So it's two, one and a half and one. So the 3090 version, okay, you need to use the one millimeter pads where all the red is, the two millimeter pad in the center, just like 3080, and the one and a half millimeter on the right and the left, just like the 3080 as well. So the only thing that changes is the one millimeter or you use the two all around. All right, look at that, the blue. That's the line I assume that it showed. And it's got this little space right here. 
But then, like, I figure it would be right here is where you actually put it. But, I don't know. Because on this side, it shows it ride right along this side of the rail, which is the same height as this one. Which just kind of throws me off a bit. That just meant, that makes the most sense to me, to be honest. And then I'll do the same thing here. I can see where the chips line up with the other thermal pads, so that's what I'm gonna do. It makes the most sense, those three chips, to have one and a half millimeter pads on them as well. So I'm just gonna cut a couple squares. And again, if the thermal pads are a little bigger, not a huge deal. Active back plate, all the thermal pads are on it around here. It shows us needing some where the memory chips are here, but we actually put those directly on the PCB and the three little microchips that are right there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is we have to take this and you really don't have to take it off fully. You just wanna loosen it at least. These screws you do need to unscrew all the way, all three of them. So you drop the plate on the underside, which is holding the O-rings in. This little plate just came off. Underneath, there is O-rings right here, but that is what makes the uh, connection to the other water block. So I'm gonna take all those screws out, take the plate we have, and we're going to line it up with the holes again. So that's it, now we gotta line up all the screws here, uh, but I don't suggest tightening them too far until you get the top caught, because this is the most crucial part. And you wanna make sure the O-rings didn't like, you know, come dislodged or move so let me open this pack of screws I am going to use the nickel ones not the black ones they give you both if you want to use black screws you can I'm just gonna screw them in not all the way now I like to put my hand over the PCB to make sure it's uh, it's good I guess it's probably hard for you guys to see actually you can see it see the black o-rings right in there you just want to make sure they're in there. You want to make sure they didn't come dislodged, they didn't come off. Um, you want to check out the other one, make sure they're all somewhat seated properly, okay? And then this is the most terrifying part. So you could do this very wrong. <laughs> if you don't tighten this, or if you, if you tighten it and you cross thread it, you're in a world of trouble because if you mess up the threads, you're just done. Like the, the water block is no longer going to be a good working water block. So I'm gonna hold it at like an angle where the PCB is not on the table and I'm going to tighten or try to tighten. Like you wanna try to catch the screws. You wanna feel them going into the, like the actual spots. And because it's not completely squished, it might, um, might give you a little resistance but that's why I loosened the other side but yeah guys this this part is like the suckiest part getting this to line up because you got to get the over make sure the o-rings are good you don't want to crack the block almost done but we got to uh I can't let this get screwed up there we go there we go Ah, just sometimes man like I don't understand it you just need to like put pressure right here to get this thing lined up you usually just loosen the other bolts to give yourself wiggle room to be able to catch all the threads once they're all caught then you can make it up just checking the o-rings making sure they're all good so the the seal is made by the o-ring not so much by you being a you know like wrench in the thing but with a regular Allen wrench, I like to give it a little extra twist all around. You just wanna make sure it's tight. You don't wanna crack anything, you know? And that's it, man. I think that's it. Should be good to go. So now, again, this wire here, you don't need. So you just tuck it wherever. And as you can see, this is the final product. Now this thing is up and running, no leaks, and it's been running pretty good, so can't complain. So what'd you guys think? Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, the mask is because I don't show my face, not because I'm sick or anything. Just wanted to get that out of the way right now. But um, I couldn't find any type of full walkthrough video on how to do any type of water cooling on YouTube. It was just like sped through, you know, here's the water block and here's it done. Basically, it's just a full speed and 
nothing was explained. So I, that's what I was trying to do here. I wanted to explain where to put the thermal pads, how to do it, and I hope this really helped. If it did, please just leave it in the comments below. Let me know that this was like a good tutorial or if you guys wanna see more water block stuff, you know, also let me know down uh, in the uh, pinned comment i'm gonna leave an affiliate link store i have a, a full like crypto mining store i will make a section for water cooling that will be pretty much all the parts i used here um and i'll just like put some fittings in there and stuff because i know when i was getting into this it was super hard to figure out what the hell to buy because you don't know anything you know what i mean it's just a whole nother world when it comes to water cooling i mean I know crypto mining in general was pretty tough to uh, kind of grasp at the beginning and you know water cooling it doesn't make it any easier it just throws another wrench in the plan so I'll do that for you guys I'll leave it down in the pinned comment and I'll get a whole list together so you guys know what to look for um, also if you guys need any crypto mining merch down in the description below crypty.co I have a link for them I don't make any money off it it's solely for you guys if you're interested a bunch of content creator stuff's on there so it's pretty neat and then um, the meter box company this is a partnership for this month of March. We're gonna be giving away an eight GPU server case for every $5 spent on their website. You guys actually get one entry. So if you buy the chump green color, you get two entries per $5. So that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested, please go check them out. The link is down below as well. But guys, as always, I appreciate you all for watching. If you did appreciate this, hit that like down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't seen this video or this video, please go check them out and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.